is to get to the signal so they to give you actual advice so you can make informed decisions. Joining me this week is Chris. Uh, it's good to have you here. It's been a low uh, headline week. There's not a lot going on in the market, uh, and we're Four coming weeks. up. On uh, we're coming up on a, a holiday uh, week next week, so we won't be doing the weekly market insight uh, next week. And one of the things that has just really dominated has been inflation. And I know that here in a, a little bit we're going to get uh, the news talking about how much a new Thanksgiving dinner uh, is going to cost this year. Most expensive. So let's just jump right back into that inflation. And what we're looking at here is the CPI uh, as well as the St. Louis CPI, which is red. It's a little bit higher than the average CPI. And then what the Fed likes to look at is that per personal consumption expenditure. What I would notice is that these are all at their highest point uh, since really the beginning of the century. Uh, so inflation is high. Uh, we saw that report of 6.2% uh, last year. Or for the, the trailing uh, for 12 October, months. October, the CPI of yeah. October, right? And we get PCE next, next week. That kind of trails a little bit. Right. Right? And that's really the Fed's favorite measure. They'll be paying attention to that. It'll be interesting to see what that is. Uh, we, we had said last week that they're already behind the curve, uh, so they need to be raising rates. They probably will be pretty slow. Uh, we'll, we'll see some taper. But when we look at the different municipal, uh, or the metropolitan areas, uh, St. Louis is one of the highest, but Atlanta is uh, a little bit higher, and that's because of what is actually driving inflation, uh, energy and food. Uh, if you're out of New York, you're going to have more energy in the, 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 the gas expenses uh, to kind of move around and have transportation. So that's one of the things that's uh, affecting the baskets differently, where in St. Louis or Atlanta, you're going to drive further, so there, your basket is a little bit uh, constructed a little is, bit differently. Is there anything going on demographically? People move in? There, if you look at the areas that were shut down uh, during COVID, uh, those are not experiencing as much inflation. Uh, and there is probably a component that the places were open. If we look at how the demographic shifts, uh, Florida has picked up an enormous amount of population. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that is driving, let's say, lumber prices because you got to build homes. The wait, uh, waiting time to get a new home construction uh, done in, in Florida is, 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 I think it's 13 to 14 months. Uh, after you've signed the contract, then it takes some time to actually get to that contract. So all of those things are driving inflation. So it is different uh, across uh, the country, but it's high everywhere. Even uh, the lowest one here is San Francisco. Uh, it looks to still be around that 4%. Remember, the Fed's target is 2%. Uh, so we continue to hear about supply chain disruptions. That's certainly part of this story on, uh, on driving inflation. We've covered that uh, uh, extensively through uh, our other weekly market insights. I, I was just reading this morning that the, the ports have small bit of good news. They're starting to clean up some of the containers that have been sitting there for a while, but they're still at longest wait times, 17 days for uh, ships off, off the port, and there's about 83 ships out there, both at new highs for lag time and number of ships. And whenever I've seen the numbers on the amount of uh, containers they can get off versus the amount of containers that are showing up on new ships, uh, that, that may be continuing right. to grow for some time. It's going to be slow. Another thing that's hit the, uh, um, the, the CPI thing is just the shortage in chips. Uh, and this grabs some headlines this, uh, this week uh, that there's a lot of venture capital companies that are actually involved in the U.S. Uh, or U.S. investment money going to China to build uh, wafer facilities there. Uh, and, and there was some back and forth between China and the U.S. and China saying we need a, a robust free market uh, on these things, and I found that kind of comical uh, that, that they would make that claim, uh, being that they're certain, everyone's got dirt on their shirt here, but I, I think China uh, is a pot calling the kettle black there. Uh, and then when we look at what is driving, it's energy, motor uh, vehicle, parts, household furnishing. These are the things that are, and food, these are the things that are driving the inflation. And last week we talked about the infrastructure bill and uh, the president's statement that the infrastructure bill is needed to help slow inflation. And maybe long term, the, that could happen because you have better infrastructure. But initially, if, if it's energy and raw materials that are driving prices and we look at where the money is going in that infrastructure bill, we're probably not going to see this infrastructure bill give us much reprieve on that inflation. Everything would say that we'll see higher inflation because there's a lot of energy, a lot of oil that's, uh, and material needed to build uh, roads, bridges, power grids, freight rail. So all of these would actually increase the inflation the way that it's being measured uh, there. So we think inflation is, is here for some time. Uh, and just because we have rising prices, there, 
it doesn't mean that you're going to see your wages increase. And we actually noticed this in the, uh, the real wage growth by industry. Leisure hospitality, they have a real positive wage growth uh, of 4.7%. Most, though, are, are uh, negative. And then that, the all workers, you compare it to the production and non-supervisory, uh, we're actually seeing the higher wage industries and the more professional industries are not getting the wage increases. Uh, it, it's really the labor and the lower skilled, and that chart is over there, where low wage industries are actually higher, uh, seeing pay increases, and the more professional higher wages are not seeing that. So there, there is a little bit of a, just because prices are going up, we're not seeing that in, in earnings. We've seen some negative wage growth. I do think the labor shortage is going to continue to put some pressure on those wages to, to help move them up. It's just not showing up. And then when we look in, I see this all the time. Everyone says the bond market isn't pricing in inflation. Well, inflation expectations are certainly moving up, but to their point, yields are not moving up. But we've had a marginal buyer, the Federal Reserve, going in there and actually trying to keep prices where they are. So I don't think it's a fair statement to say the market isn't pricing in inflation right. whenever there is a non-market participant with unlimited capital keeping those prices low. They're trying to keep the yields low, right? Yes. Then keep the prices high. Um, I think what you're referencing is that, that red line, which is the yield on the 10-year, the, the blue line inflation. Historically, looking back, red was above blue because bond buyers have an inflation premium they right. want. And then once the Fed enters in 2020 with some bond buying, it get distorted. So one of the things that we've continued to warn about is inflation and not to go to bonds because they're going to lose in inflation. And we can see that here. Uh, the inflation expectation is far greater than the bond yields, meaning that the market is pricing in the inflation. It's just not showing up in the coupon rate. Uh, so then here we are. Uh, the, the Fed, they're going to begin a tapering. Uh, we did get an announcement from the New York Fed. Uh, they're going from, I think it's 75 to 60 uh, billion. Uh, it is a yeah. B uh, per month on treasuries, and I think they're going from 30 to 25 uh, billion on mortgage-backed securities. So they're beginning to slow the amount of money that's flowing into these right. markets, keeping the, the coupon price where it is. Balance sheet increasing a little bit for the Fed, but slowing at that rate, as you're saying. And uh, once again, it's not just us that thinks the, the Fed is behind the curve. Uh, this is probably the most dovish uh, uh, Fed uh, member, and he is saying that, no, inflation's here. It's here for a while uh, to, to expect inflation. So the Federal Reserve right. is also but, expecting it. But I, don't, I think he, he doesn't really want to raise uh, Neil Kashkari. I don't think he wants to raise rates until 2023. Yeah, he is so. the most dovish. But so he's also not a voting member. Uh, I think he, isn't he on the next cycle? No, I think he, well, let's see. We got. I think we have a slide on here. He, the Minneapolis Fed's not voting member until 2023. Oh, 2023. Yeah. So, um, so some of the loudest people are not voters. So we've heard from Kashkari last week, and we also heard from St. Louis Fed Bullard, who's the exact opposite. Yes. He, he wants to, you know, taper immediately, almost down to zero, and start raising rates. And he is a voting member next year. So but the, he's cynic, not now. the cynic in me is, is yeah. like that we never raised rates until well past when we should. So the, the maybe it's in 2023 when we finally will be raising rates that we get the most dovish member on the Fed. So we don't raise rates then either. Yeah. I'm just going to be a cynic on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, the the uh, expect inflation to be here for some time. It is not transitory uh, going forward. Is there other things you want to cover on this slide? No, I just wanted to point out that the the loudest people talking right now, at least in this last week, were, we're not voting members. Uh, it's a little bit of a free roll, right? Yeah, you, you, can, you can get your, your views out there without being accountable to actually... Th that's to right. Vote. I think Bullard is definitely playing that game as well. Is that we should be raising rates and he's not, he, he's not going to make an impact. So if we have inflation, which we do, he looks like he was smart. But right. uh, you can't pin the uh, uh, raising rates and the economy slowing on him either. Coming close to the end of earnings, uh, retail is reporting. Uh, anything that you're specifically looking for whenever we're seeing uh, the, re the report? Retail looks like it's all about margins. You know, if, if, if they see margins going down, they're getting hit hard. We saw that with Target. I think Home Depot did pretty well and was, was rewarded, but still early. I think Lowe's was today as well. So still got a lot of data to go through for the retail at least. Revenue growth is high. We're at 17% on the quarter. Pretty good rate looking back. Right. Uh, it's, it's certainly not the 25%, yeah, but... And we're coming off a low. I mean, that's that's a solid number there. Right. But back to, to margins, number of people warning for inflation, 285 out of the 500 calls. 
They're saying we're going to have inflation issues significantly higher than we've seen in past earnings seasons. And I've seen a lot of graphs where they mark how many people warn about inflation and what inflation is, and that seems to be very correlated. So that may be giving you an idea of what we're expecting to see in inflation, that it continues to move up and well above uh, anything that we've seen going all the way back to 2018. Right. And margins coming down because of it. Right. That, that to be expected. Um, and a forecast for next quarter is actually to also continue down with margins. But historically, still okay. Right? Earnings season helped push stock prices up. I think they're, they, they know that margins are being squeezed, but there's, companies are still doing well. And there's going to be companies that can push that out mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and not see a, a margin compression. And, and we're going to be looking for those companies who can actually push the cost of inflation out because that would be a good inflation hedge because we know that bonds are losing, right? So then here's our calls. Uh, inflation risk is high. That's been a very accurate call. Uh, we made that uh, coming out of the, uh, the, the COVID lockdown to continue to favor equities over fixed income. Right call there. Continue to favor U.S. Uh, domestic equity. Certainly a great call. If I see one more thing of uh, we should buy international because it's priced so well and it's never been this low, it's been quite low for some time. It hasn't been working, so we continue <laughs> to favor the U.S. domestic market until we see some. Favor technology? Boy, that's been a back and forth this year, uh, but I think that the, uh, that theme is reasserting itself. Uh, so I think uh, some pretty good calls. Making or near uh, highs, uh, all-time highs again on the S&P 500. Continues to climb that wall of worry. We're kind of out of the seasonal uh, drag of uh, September, October. Uh, so it will probably have a, a pretty good end of the year. Uh, we don't really see anything showing up in the data to say otherwise. We're actually starting to see money supply uh, move up. And other than the yield curve being flat, most things are looking pretty optimistic. A um, little, uh, little bit of a sell-off early last week, recovered back. That's kind of what you were pointing to. Kind of a boring week. Uh, anything else that we want to cover this week? No, I think we got it. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, be sure to, to click that like button. Uh, and uh, if you know of anyone that would be of interest in this, hit that share button, send that over. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click the subscribe. Here's the number so you can contact the lead advisor if you have any questions uh, for our team or if you want to talk to us and uh, me or Chris, uh, send us a number or a call. Thanks and have a good week.